Uh, welcome back to summer term new class. Hope you've all, you're all well and that you've really enjoyed some time spent with your families and in the sunshine that we had. Um, so welcome back to the summer term and we're going to start our daily challenges again to, uh, today starting this week and our first challenge is to do with maths and it is adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. Um, this is something that we're revisiting. So I'm first going to demonstrate how to add fractions with unlike denominators and then subtract as well. And then you're going to have a go at answering task A. Then after that, I will demonstrate um, task B and then task C. So here I have two fractions and as you can see they have different denominators they are unlike fractions because they have different denominators um, <clears throat> these denominators though are multiples um, of the say are, are, are common multiples so it makes it a little bit easier when we're working it out so first of all when we've got unlike um, denominators we need to convert one of them so that one of the denominators to have the same denominator as the other one in order for us to add or subtract. So looking at these two, I can see that I've got seven tenths here and I can convert one fifth to seven to tenths. So in my working out over here, I'm going to do that. So we'll start with one fifth and we need to change that to tenths. So we look and see what have we done to the 5 to make it 10 and we have obviously times by 2. So whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So I also times 2 to my numerator. So 1 times 2 is 2. So I have now converted 1 fifth to 2 tenths. So I can go back over here and write two tenths plus, now this is already in tenths, so seven tenths, and now I add them together, two tenths, add seven tenths is nine tenths. And that is the answer. So now I've got one where we are subtracting. So I've got four fifths take away two fifteenths. So again, I'm looking to change one of those to, so that they have the same denominator. So I can see that I can change four fifths to fifteenths. So moving over here, four fifths to fifteenths. So again, I say, what have I done to five to make it 15, I have times by 3, 5, 10, 15, times by 3. So whatever I do to the bottom again, I do to the top, times by 3. I'm making an equivalent fraction of 4 fifths to make it into 15 So 4 times 3 is 12. So I have now converted 4 fifths to 12 fifteenths. So I go over here. Oops. 12 fifteenths. Take away 2 fifteenths. Now because they have the same denominator, I can do that. I'm looking carefully at my sign. If I've been doing a few additions, I must just be very careful that I'm looking at the sign to see that I've now moved on to subtraction. So 12 take away 2 is 10, 10 fifteenths. Now you can either leave that as your answer or you can simplify it. And the way you simplify it is you say, what times table are 10 and 15 in multiples of the same times table? And I know that they are both in the five times table. We want the highest, okay? So um, we 
uh, both in the five times table. So divide the top and bottom by five to simplify. So 10 divided by five is two and 15 divided by five is three. So I'm now simplified 10 fifteenths to two thirds. However, if you find that a bit of a, um, too much of a step, you can leave it there in, as that answer. Or if it ends up with an improper fraction, you can leave it as an improper fraction. So that should help you with task A. So pause the video, answer task A, and then you can start. Right, so task B asks you to complete the magic square uh, by providing the missing fractions that go into those boxes. Now what we know about a magic square is that each row, column and row, diagonal, all add up to the same amount. So the first thing you would need to do is to work out what that amount is by adding up those three fractions there. Um, once you know that, you can then work out the missing fraction. So if you'd like to go ahead and start that task without any more instruction, you can pause the video now. If not, and you need a little bit more help, listen on. Right, so I need to add up my two ninths, add half, add one ninth. Now I'm first going to add my ninths together. Two ninths, add one ninth. Now this is nice and easy as they have the same denominator. So simply add your numerators. 2 add 1 is 3, 3 ninths. Now I still need to add my half to that. Now I could go and add 3 ninths add a half, but it's a little bit more difficult that way. If I go and simplify 3 ninths first and then add a half, that will be easier. So let's look at 3 ninths. Now, how do I simplify that? I, again, like I said in the last time, you think about um, what times table those are multiples of. So what times table are they both multiples of? So three and nine, I'm thinking it must be the three times table. So I divide top and bottom by three in order to simplify that. So 3 divided by 3, the numerator 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I've now simplified my 3 ninths to a third, which is now going to be much easier um, when I'm coming to adding my half. So I've got 1 third, add a half. Now one third add a half, um, I'm going to need to convert those both to have the same denominator. Not just one like the last time, but both of them. So I think about my two and my three times table, because I'm looking there, two and my three times table. And I'm trying to find my lowest common multiple. So I've written out the first lot of my 2 times table, 1 times 2, 2 times 2, and 3 times 2, and I've got to 6, which I also know is in my 3 times table. So I found my common multiple, and it is 6. So I need to change 1 third to a 6, and 1 half to sixes. So just like I did earlier, I need to see what have I done to three to make it six? What have I done to three to change it to six? I've times by two, so I need to do the same to the top. One times two is two. So I've changed a third to two sixes, and I've now changed my half to three sixes, because a half how many sixes is a half? It must be three sixes. And now I'm going to add together my third plus my half. 
So thinking about, I've now, a third I've got changed to two sixes. And my half I've changed to three sixes. So if I add those together, I get five sixes, which gives me the total for each row or column is five sixes. And knowing that, you should then be able to work out by adding together what you've got, what, uh, so adding those two together, changing them both to 18s, and then seeing what you need to do to get to five sixes. It might be worth your while working out what five sixes is when converted to 18s. So five sixes, I've changed six to 18 by times and by three. So do the same to five, five times three will give me 15 eighteenths, which is the same. 15 eighteenths is five sixes, which will help you when you're adding that up to see what you need to still add to get the total of 15 eighteenths, which is equivalent to five sixes. Well, it's quite tricky, but have a go. Task C now involves adding mixed numbers to fractions. So the, the way, there are two ways to do it. You could um, keep the, the, num the, the whole number separate or you could convert that into an improper fraction and that is the way I'm going to go about it. So first convert it to an improper fraction by going 1 times 3 is 3. Add your 2 which is your numerator to the 3 which is 5. So you've got five thirds, add a ninth. And now proceed as you did in task A, which is uh, getting them to have the same denominator. So again, I can see that I need to change my five thirds to ninths in order for them to both have the same denominator. So times that by three, do the same to the top give you 15 ninths. So over here, 15 ninths at 1 ninth is 16 ninths, which is an improper fraction. So I can now change that into a mixed number. How many nines go into 16? 1. Remainder 7 over the same denominator 9. 1 and 7 ninths. And if you get something like um, for sixes, you can then further simplify, but there's nothing more to simplify here. Um, have a go at, at task C, but if you find it gets too, too difficult, please stop.